order of magnitude estimations. So this is not an essential part of the class. Um, it's in your book, and we have time today, so I'd like to talk about it. Um, precise numerical calculations are not always necessary. They're not even always possible. Sometimes we just need to get an approximate number. And so when might you need this? Well, like if you're doing a titration or something and you just want to get a rough idea of how much titrant am I going to need. Or if we're looking at the answer to a problem we've solved and we're just trying to figure out, is this reasonable? We can do this mental math, um, which your book calls order of magnitude estimation, to just get a ballpark idea. And what this does is it's focusing on the exponential part of numbers written in scientific notation. So we're just looking at orders of magnitude. How do you do that? So you look at the, at the number. If the decimal part, the, the part in front of the times 10 to the something, is less than 5, just drop it. And if it's more than 5, round it up to 10. And what that does is it increases the power of 10. So let's just make up some examples. What if we're dealing with uh, 4.29 times 10 to the fourth meters? To do an order of magnitude estimation, I'm going to look at this part of the number and say, well, that's less than 5. So I'm going to say this is approximately 10 to the fourth meters. Or maybe it was, um, can't start with a zero, 9.01 times 10 to the minus 2 uh, seconds. Nope, that's the wrong, I'm, I'm doing that example in the wrong place. Let's try that again. I'm supposed to be doing something less, less than 5. There, that's less than 5. So the decimal part of my scientific notation number is less than 5, so I'm just going to get rid of it. And I'm going to say that's approximately the same as 10 to the minus 2. It's approximate. We know it's not the same, but it's close. Okay, We're going to round everything to the nearest 100,000, whatever, just to make the math easy enough that we can do it in our heads. So what if it's, if it's larger? What if we have... 6.5 times 10 to the 6 uh, micrograms. Well, this part of the number is greater than 5. So we're going to round that up to 10. So we're going to say, well, that's approximately 10 times 10 to the 6 micrograms. But that's not proper scientific notation. So that would be equal to 10 to the 7th micrograms. If this makes no sense to you, then just plug your ears till I finish with it, because you do not have to learn this. For some of you, this is like just in sync with how you think, and it'll make sense, and so great, you can use it, but you don't have to do it. I don't particularly like doing estimations like this, but my husband's always rattling off all these calculations in my head, in his head. And he's, he actually says them out loud, so they're not really in his head. And I can't follow him. I'm like, I want a piece of paper, and I want to just write it down and, and figure it out. Any questions about that? So then you can do a problem like this without using a calculator. Estimate the number of atoms that an immortal being could have counted in the 14 billion years that the universe has been in existence. And they're telling us that one year is equal to 3.2 times 10 to the 7 seconds. OK, so do we know that the universe has existed for exactly 14 billion years? No. That's someone's best estimation. I'm sure there's lots of people that would disagree with that. But we're just going to go with it. It's just an estimation. So what we're going to do is we want to find out how many atoms you could count in 14 billion years. Well, how fast can you count? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So maybe like five numbers in a second? I don't know. Or one number in a second? That's true. 
Yeah. Yeah. So as you get much, much larger numbers, you can't count as fast as you can the first 10 numbers. So we need to make an estimation here. Let's just say, what if you counted one number for in each second? So every second, you're counting a new number. That'll make our calculation easy. So we're going to say, OK, I can count one number per second. Well, let's actually just use the abbreviation S for second. And we want to know how many atoms you could count. Well, actually, so instead of saying one atom, I'm sorry, instead of saying one number, let's say we can count one atom per second. So we've got 14 billion years. Um, so that's uh, 1.4 times 10 to the 10 years. How many seconds is that? We're going to do this without our calculators. Well, one year is 3.2 times 10 to the 7 seconds. So what we're going to do is we're going to round these numbers. So we're going to call 1.4 times 10 to the 10th. We're going to say, well, that's about 10 to the 10th years. And one year equals that 3.2 is less than 5, so we're just going to drop it. One year is about 10 to the 7th seconds. So then what I'm going to do in my head is I'm going to say, well, 10 to the 10th years, and I can, I've got 10 to the 7th seconds per year, and then I can count one atom per second. Okay, 10 to the 10th times 10 to the 7th. When you multiply exponential numbers, you add the exponents. And so that is 10 to the 17th atoms. If you counted one atom per second in the entire 14 billion years that we think the universe has existed, you could count 10 to the 17th atoms. I know this is getting ahead of the lecture, but how many atoms are in one mole of a substance? 10 to the 23rd. So if you're going to round it, it's 10 to the 24th. Yeah, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd would round to the 24th. 10 to the 24th. So it, you couldn't even count one mole of atoms in 14 billion years. These numbers are so big we just can't even get our heads around them. Any questions about order of magnitude estimations?